<laughs> and then what do you say? On, and then what you do? <laughs> Girl, I would have died! <laughs> No way! Stop it! Ah, oh my! I know! Yeah! What? Oh, I'm just making some milkshakes. <laughs> milkshake? Watch your show on any TV in your house with Iris, the new HD multi-room DVR from Rev TV. Start watching in one room and pick up right where you left off in another. Call to get Iris in your house today. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, a prominent pastor says the political firestorm over the referendum is a good thing. Meantime, two government ministers are urging MPs to remain level-headed. Customs and Immigration Union members threaten to shut down the country's borders again. Plus, a former BTC executive speaks for the first time since his abrupt departure from the company. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on NB12 Weekend. Welcome once again to MB12. The constitutional amendment bills have sparked a firestorm of controversy with everyone from politicians to community activists weighing in. Earlier this week, members of the governing party butt heads over the controversial issue, with one PLP MP accusing another of misleading the House and using scare tactics. Outspoken religious leader Bishop Simeon Hall says the back and forth is a positive sign of democracy. Jasmine Brown reports. Hall calls the controversy surrounding the constitutional referendum nothing more than a healthy debate, but he insists that talks about legalizing gay marriage should not be brought into the discussion. There was contentious debate in the House of Assembly on Wednesday after Fort Charlotte Member of Parliament Andre Rollins and Bamboo Town MP Renward Wells announced that they do not support the fourth constitutional amendment bill. It seeks to end discrimination based on sex, but the two men argued it could pave the way for same-sex marriage. Hall says it is refreshing to see members expressing their own opinions on the controversial matter, instead of blindly following their party. For the first time in a very long time, we have people within a particular party differing from the party stands. That's progressive in my way of thinking. I think we need that. Gone are the days when what the PLP said or what the FNM says became Bible and their, their uh, people could not differ. I think it is healthy to have differing voices. The government tabled four bills to amend the Constitution last month. The bills will institute full equality between men and women in matters of citizenship and will eliminate discrimination in the Bahamas based on sex. While the Prime Minister has said that same-sex marriage is not legal and government does not intend to change that, critics like DNA leader Branville McCartney have said the wording could lead to that. LGBT activist Aaron Green has said while the referendum seeks to expand the rights of men and women, it also bodes well for the LGBT community. She insisted that by granting equal rights for women, it would be the start of equal rights for sectors of society. Well, Hall says while he respects the rights of all Bahamians, same-sex marriage is not a factor in the upcoming referendum. When I read what is before us now, I do not see the issue of uh, homosexuals and lesbians and gays being given rights. I've always said we should respect the views of others, be they gay, lesbian, or any kind of way. Let's respect each other's uh, views. The referendum is set for November 6th. Reporting for NB12 Weekend, I'm Jasmine Brown. 
and Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister Fred Mitchell responding to opposition leaders about face on the constitutional referendum. Mitchell did not want to respond at length on the issue, explaining his words would be too uncharitable. However, he did quote former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram. Mitchell said a deal is a deal. My words would be far too uncharitable. Um, it's better for me to let the leaders of the party characterize that because, you know, you don't want to prejudice things going forward. But, you know, their former leader used to say, a deal is a deal. Mitchell also criticized those who have latched on to what he called irrational arguments explaining the referendum is simply about gender equality. He also noted that in addition to consensus between the prime minister and opposition leader, party discipline is needed for the bills to pass. I'll be voting yes for them all if they get to that. I want my constituents to vote yes. This is about equality for women. This is not for any of this other inane nonsense that people are running around with a bunch of rot and irrational arguments which have nothing to do with anything. This is about party discipline. This is about the leader of the opposition having agreed with the Prime Minister on a package of bills which came from the Constitutional Commission. We want to vote yes for them. If there's no consensus on the matter between the leader of the opposition and the government, then the question is, how can you proceed? FNM Chairman Darren Cash has defended Dr. Hubert Minnis, saying the party leader showed wisdom and courage when he raised concerns about the bills and reform process last Wednesday. He made it clear the opposition supports gender equality 100 percent. And the minister responsible for elections also weighed in, asserting gay marriage has nothing to do with the November 6th constitutional referendum. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage was responding to concerns the Fourth Amendment bill will pave the way for gay marriage. He explained some may be using the issue as a distraction. I don't feel anything because it has nothing to do with gay marriage. I know that there are people who will use that uh, to write it for reasons other than their real belief because I think that there will always be people in our society who really don't want equality for women. But the bill has nothing to do with same-sex marriage. And in other news tonight, President of the Bahamas Customs, Immigration and Allied Workers Union Sloan Smith is demanding government reintroduce overtime pay for the union's members or expect industrial action. Overtime is a constant. When staff are off duty, boats, aircrafts are still coming. So you need them to come so you pay them the overtime. What we are saying to the government is put the line item head back in customs and immigration called overtime or processing fees, whatever you want to call it, clearance fees, but put it there, put the money there. Right now what is happening is you have officers working the extra services and they're working three and four and five months before they can get something and when they get something you pay them for a month. That is, that is grossly unfair when you consider at the end of the month the control of customs, the director of immigration, they get allowances, what they call responsibility allowance, added to their salary, beyond their salary, $500 a month. That is a constant, they're getting that. The overtime for the officer similarly ought to be every month. On Wednesday, the Trade Union Congress, which the Customs and Immigration Union falls under, again threatened that the countdown to industrial action was on. Smith said his members are geared up to take whatever measures are necessary to have their demands met. We are at a point really where the workers are about to do things. And all we're waiting on, when we talked about having strike certificates, the TUC under this umbrella have five groupings who already have strike certificates. We have two strike certificates. And what we are simply saying is we're not going to strike because of promotions and stuff. That's not it. The fact that the government refuses to meet and properly entreat with other members of the TUC so that they can get their agreements. And talk is talk. Minister keeps talking, but he signed all these agreements. Minister needs to be more forthcoming with the truth when he speaks. And on to other news, police say they arrested a 36-year-old man of Faith Avenue for indecent exposure yesterday. Reports are that last evening the man was on a Paradise Island beach exposing himself to female tourists and making sexual gestures toward them. He was arrested by officers called to the scene and will be charged with the offense. In other crime news, police want your help in solving an early morning shooting that left a 23-year-old man in critical condition in hospital. Reports are that around 1.30 this morning, police were called after
After gunshots were heard in the Faith Avenue area, the victim, a resident of Sunset Park, reportedly left a nightclub in the area and was walking to his car when he noticed a group of men arguing. The argument escalated and gunshots were fired, resulting in the victim being shot multiple times in the abdomen. Authorities are also investigating two stabbing incidents. The first happened at around 1.30 this morning when a 15-year-old boy of Jubilee Gardens was attending a basketball game on Nassau Street and became involved in a verbal altercation with another male. And a third male then attacked the victim from behind and stabbed him in the back. He's listed in serious condition in hospital. And less than three hours later, a 24-year-old Newbold Street man showed up to the accident and emergency section at PMH suffering from multiple stab wounds. Police say the man, who's on bail for serious offense and was wearing an electronic monitoring, monitoring device, could not give a satisfactory account to them as to how he became injured. And doctors described his injuries as serious, according to police.